Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is James, I'm a critical care paramedic and today we're going to be doing pacing. So we're going to talk about the indications of pacing, what is pacing, why do we pace, and how to do it safely, right? Like I'm always going to say is that different services, different trusts will have different specifics about what, you know, like um, jewels you need to like start with or stop with or what's the maximum, like, you know, the minimal max of this and that. So mine's just a generic, that, you know, this is what can be done. Always make sure you follow whatever your trust is saying. So what is pacing? So pacing is when we shock in the heart at a controlled rate to make it speed up. So if someone's in a bradycardia, such as like a third degree heart block and atropine is not working, that is what we're gonna do, right? So we're going to pace um, a third degree heart block. What do we need to pace? We need our leads on. So the leads are on, they just are invisible or actually they're just plugged into my uh, rhythm generator that's at the back here. So you can't see the leads on the patient and we have pads on. So you need leads and you need pads. You cannot pace just through Pads. Great, so now we have a monitor on and we can see that we have our rhythm on there. So how do we pace? First, we're gonna jump into who do we pace, right? So the patient needs to be unstable. So different councils, so like the AHA or the UK Resource Council guidelines will have different specifics on what is stable, or stable and unstable. But in general, it's people who are in shock. So they're hypotensive, altered level mental status, so loss in consciousness, um, chest pain, you know, shorter breath, all these things are leading to us saying that they are unstable. They are, they, they are in shock. Their rhythm, their rate is causing the shock, right? What do we do? How does this work? First thing you need to do is that not every monitor can pace, right? Monitors cost more to have the pacing module, and fortunately, this one has that, right? So in some corner somewhere on the monitor, there will be a button to turn on the pacing module. So this isn't to start pacing, it's just to turn on the pacing module. So we hit turn on the pacing module, and now it's gonna ask us rate and milliamps. So let's go up to 70, right? Happy? And our, our milliamps, so how many milliamps do we wanna start with? We're gonna start with zero. And you're also gonna see that at the bottom there, it says demand. So you can change from demand to fixed, so demand means that if the patient's intrinsic heart rate goes above 70, the pacer will turn off. Unfixed, it will pace at 70 no matter what's happening to this patient, right? It's going to just pace no matter what happens to the patient's heart rate. So demand is quite safe. You know, it's what we're going to typically do unless we're in something that's moving, like a helicopter or a plane, where our ECG will be all distorted. Um, we are then going to not do that. We are going to put it on fix for something like that. But demand is perfectly safe for now. On here we have a button that says rate, current, and pause. So we're happy with our rate, right? 70 is absolutely fine. We're going to select yes, and then current. So what we do now is that we're going to increase our current. It's important to notice that once I increase the current to 10 milliamps, which is the least amount, we can see our pacing spikes appear on the ECG. I'm gonna just turn this into a cascade. We see our pacing spikes, but after each pacing spike, we don't see any QRS, right? And that's what we need to know that we have capture. So we have three different kinds of capture. We have electrical capture, we have mechanical capture, and we have physiological capture. So I will explain all these in a moment. We're looking for electrical capture. So something that's important is that some machines, when you increase the milliamps, you have to push select to then actually select that setting, but some, as you increase, it just increases as you, you know, change the dial. So sometimes you have to increase and then hit select, and then increase and then hit select, where with the, um, with the life pack, you can just increase and then, it, and then it just increases. How fast do we increase? Uh, there's many a chain of thought. Um, I've heard people say, just jump up to 50 and then go up from there. You know, some will say go up by 10 and then wait, go up by 10 and then wait, and then go by 10 and wait. We need to get this patient pacing as soon as possible, right? This is a temporary fix. This is transcutaneous pacing. Uh, we need to just get it on. We need to get it quickly. It is quick. It's dirty. Um, they're not going to be on this for long, right? They're going to pass a transvenous pacer as quick as they can. Whatever you do, increase the current, right? So we're going to increase the current. I like the saying of that per each QRS that we can see, we're going to increase so, you know, the heart rate's running at like 30. Um, the patient's in shock, we're going to increase every time we see a beat, which means we are increasing pretty quick. Right, so 40, 50, 60, 70. Oh, there we go. So, now, after each pacing spike, I have a QRS. So that tells me that we have electrical capture. So first capture is done. Now we're going to go for mechanical capture. Does the mechanism work better now? So the thing about this is that we don't feel for a carotid pulse. Why? 
because the muscular jerking of the chest can sometimes feel like a carotid pulse. So we go for a femoral pulse. We put our fingers on the femoral pulse and we look and we say, does what I feel at the femoral pulse sync up to what I see on the monitor? I've set the rate to 70. Do I feel 70? If I'm not feeling 70, we don't have mechanical capture. We have electrical capture only. So we then need to increase our milliamps until we start feeling capture. Because what we see here doesn't always represent to what's happening here, right? Like a PEA would be a good example. So now that we have electrical capture, I have mechanical capture. Now we want to look for physiological capture. So what is that? That is now, do we have a physiological response to this change in heart rate? So now we want to check, are we still in shock, right? We check blood pressure, we check level of consciousness, we check all these things. And so if the patient's blood pressure has now increased to, let's say, 100 over 70, we can then successfully say we have electrical capture, mechanical capture, and physio physiological capture. And therefore, now the patient's going to probably start waking up, hopefully. Um, we now need to start managing pain and sedation if needed. So, you know, a, a little bit of midazolam and some morphine or, you know, fentanyl, whatever the case is, goes a long way. But, you know, like I said, each place, each trust will have its own protocol with managing uh, post-pacing pain management. So, yeah, so that is pacing. Um, some of the things and some places you might hear or see is that they will say that you should be building in a 10% like safety margin or just like a 10 milliamp safety margin. So if we are pacing at 70 milliamps, some places will say you should bring it up to 77, which is impossible, but we're going to bring it up to 80. So now that is our 10% safety margin to make sure that we remain having capture. The other thing that you can do is that if you want to see the underlying rhythm, there's a pause button at the bottom. So if you hit pause, it stops the pacer. So if you want to get a printout for the underlying rhythm, and then you let go of the pause, and it then starts to take over pacing again. That is how you pace with a life hack. Any questions? If I do this differently to how you do it, or if you have any you know, thoughts or feelings about what I've done, I'd love to hear what you think. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, I've got tons more up here that you would enjoy too. Thanks for your time. Bye for now.